السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه جمعين We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى We send blessings and salutations upon the best of creation the most noble of all prophets of Allah سبحانه وتعالى His companions, his household May Allah bless them, bless every one of us grant us goodness and may Allah elevate our status Brothers and sisters, in the previous episode, we were speaking about parents. And I said it is absolutely important for parents to abstain from cursing their children. I want to add something to that. We should not even call our children der using derogatory terms. Some people use, you know, animals to refer to their own children, whether it's a dog or a pig or a donkey, etc. We should not do that because that is disobedience of Allah and it is actually insulting Allah. When Allah created humankind, He created Ashraf al-Makhluqat, the most noble of all creation of Allah and Allah bestowed upon mankind a status higher than that of animals, higher than that of the other creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For you and I to refer to others in that way would be derogatory, especially if it were our own children. So therefore, brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers out there, let's not call each other and our children or anyone else, uh, you know, the names of animals, etc. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from contaminating our tongues and may He forgive our shortcomings, whatever we may have said in the past. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, forgive us. Amin. Now we move on to the prayer that I was speaking about in Surah Al-Ahqaf, where Allah says, وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ إِحْسَانًا حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ كُرْهًا وَوَضَعَتْهُ كُرْهًا وَحَمْلُهُ وَفِصَالُهُ ثَلَاثُونَ شَهْرًا Beautiful verses Allah says, We have instructed man to be kind to both his parents. Because his mother has carried him with hardship and given birth to him with hardship, or in great difficulty. وَحَمْلُهُ وَفِصَالُهُ ثَلَاثُونَ شَهْرًا And the gestation period together with the suckling was 30 months. 30 months is uh, amazing. You know, 30 months is something amazing. I can tell you what we learned from this. We learned from this that the minimum gestation is actually six months. So gestation is between six and nine months. Uh, there are a lot of rules and regulations that are based on this verse, but I'm not going to go into them right now because our topic is supplications from revelation. But to mention something interesting, uh, suckling and breastfeeding is a maximum of two years in Islam according to the Quran. That's two years, 24 months. And Allah says the, the suckling as well as the gestation is 30 months, which means six months. So 24 and six and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it as, uh, uh, you know, this period of nine months in another place in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu So we learn that the gestation is between six and nine, but the suckling is actually two years. It's very interesting. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant us an understanding. The point I want to get to is the dua, the supplication. Allah says, حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَ أَشُدَّهُ وَبَلَغَ أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَةً until that man from the age where he was just born and then when he got to his peak of 40 years, when he got to 40 years old, then he is instructed also by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make a dua for his parents, to make a dua for his own guidance. Now, by now, he should have understood his purpose on earth. We should be understanding it much earlier, but uh, I should, you know, when you get to that age. And this is why in another verse, the Quran says, Allah says in the Quran, أَوَلَمْ نُعَمِّذْكُمْ مَا يَتَذَكَّرُ فِيهِ مَنْ تَذَكَّرَ وَجَاءَكُمُ النَّذِيرِ Have we not given you age enough? for those who want to take heed or who wanted to take heed to have taken heed. And hasn't the warner come to you? 
So Allah says, as you grow older, you are supposed to be understanding Allah more. You are supposed to be understanding your purpose on earth because you are thinking about where you're going. You would also be thinking about where you came from. So it should be making you closer to Allah. And then didn't the warner come to you? The warner, the Quran, the messengers, the gray hair, everything that would give you a signal to say that, you know, you need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is the age, a should, 40 years of age. Allah says at that age, this person or the humankind, male or female, should say, Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'mataka allati an'amta alayya wa ala walidayya wa an a'mala salihan tardahu wa aslih li fi dhurriyyati inni tubtu ilayka wa inni minal muslimin Surah Al-Ahqaf, we should be learning this verse number 15 off by heart and every one of us should use it to call out to Allah so what is the meaning of this beautiful dua, the supplication? It is as follows. Rabbi awzi'ni, O oh my Rabb, O oh my Lord, grant me the ability to be thankful to you for the favors you have bestowed upon me and upon my parents and grant me the ability to do good deeds that will please you and make me good. Aslih li fi dhurriyati. This literally translates as make me good in my family, which means make my family good so that I am good. I'm known as a person who's close to you. I'm known as a person who's achieved what you wanted us to achieve by having left offspring who will be good, who will be pious, who will be righteous. So, oh Allah, make me from among those whom through my children also I am good. So not just good myself, but my children as well. Aslihli fi dhurriyati. Make my children good. That's a dua. Inni tubtu ilayk. I have indeed returned to you in, with repentance. I have repented to you. Wa inni min al muslimin, and I am from among those who have surrendered and submitted. Notice the term Muslim means someone who has surrendered and submitted to the will of Allah. When you surrender and submit, you are truly a Muslim. Subhanallah. If you haven't surrendered and submitted, you might be Muslim by religion, but you haven't actually followed what you are supposed to. May Allah subhanahu wa taala make it easy for us. Amin. So this supplication that is so powerful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made mention of here in Surah Al-Ahqaf, you may re have realized that Sulaiman alayhi salam called out to Allah much earlier using the same dua. Very similar. Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'matak. Oh Allah, grant me the ability to be thankful to you for the favors you have bestowed upon me. Uh, and that which you have bestowed upon my parents and grant me the ability to do good deeds that will please you and in the case of Sulaiman alayhi salam he said and grant me and enter me through your mercy uh, among those worshippers of yours who are righteous, subhanallah. But here Allah is telling us to make a dua for our offspring, aslihli fi dhurriyati, make my children pious. I want to pause for a moment and say what I've said before, and that is, brothers and sisters, even if you're not married, you can make a dua for pious offspring. It is an all-inclusive dua because if Allah uh, grants you that, then you have to get a good husband or a good wife first and then you have to have children thereafter. And so you just made a dua, uh, you know, subhanallah. It's like someone, something that just come to my mind, you know, it's very strange. But if someone says, uh, okay, it's very petty, but let's make this, dua. Uh, let me just give you this example. If someone says, I wish I could have uh, a burger from... Uh, the spur in Cape Town, subhanallah, and you're sitting in America. So if that was accepted, you would need to fly to Cape Town first. You would then need to be able to afford it. You would, everything comes. So you asked for that. And whatever, if that was accepted, everything that gets to it is also done. MashaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless uh, all of us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So my brothers and sisters, uh, obviously that was just uh, off the cuff. I thought of it right now. Uh, we always ask Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us pious offspring and uh, we pray for our, our parents. In this particular dua, notice how we are saying, Oh Allah, 
uh, grant me the ability to be thankful to you for the favors you bestowed upon me and my parents. Subhanallah. So two things are made mention of here. One is your, the favors Allah gave you and the other is the favors Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bestowed upon your parents. Uh, we're making dua for our parents in this way. And another thing is one of the favors that Allah bestowed upon you is also your parents. Remember this. So if you want to ask Allah, you are asking Allah, grant me the ability to be thankful for all the favors you've bestowed upon me, including my own parents. My own parents. That, that's a favor you bestowed upon me. Ask those who don't have parents, subhanAllah, and they will tell you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for them and for every one of us. And uh, this is why uh, it's amazing how uh, this dua is very, very powerful, but... In Surah Al-Isra, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about something different. He speaks about how where we shouldn't uh, be unkind to our parents. He has decreed that we will be kind to our parents. Let's listen to the verse. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Allah has declared that none shall be worshipped besides him and that you shall be kind to your parents. He has written and declared kindness to parents. If one of them or both of them were to reach old age in your parents uh, in your in your life you need to know something if one or both of your parents were to reach old age in your presence you need to know something three things four things the first is la taqul lahuma uf don't utter to them hurtful words you know like uf uh, that is an Arabic term referring to the, the sounds that we make from our mouths that express uh, dissatisfaction in a way that is insulting. You know, you say, ah, some people would do that, perhaps. In the Arabic language, it, the term uf is used. You don't say uf to your parents. You don't use hurtful words. That goes back to kindness. We're not talking here of obedience. We're talking of kindness. There is a big difference, like I've said. But part of kindness is to obey in what is reasonable. So, لا تقول لهما أوف, number one. ولا تنهرهما, you know, don't rebuke them. Don't re reply to them in an insulting way. Don't rebuke them. وقل لهما قولا كريما. The third thing, when you say anything, Use the best words to address them. May Allah forgive us for the shortcomings. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking how many times I might have unknowingly or knowingly said things to my own parents without thinking uh, that, you know, this might not be the best way I could have worded what I want to say. Allah says, قُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا You need to say, if you want the mercy of Allah, those parents of yours, even when you disagree with them, disagree with the most beautiful words. And when you are saying anything to them, say it with beautiful words, Kareem, on words that are filled with honor, with dignity. And the fourth thing, وَاخْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ Lower the wing of uh, mercy, the shade of mercy. جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ You know, humility, humbleness. And mercy they should feel from you. Allahu Akbar. Say, O oh my Lord, O oh my Rabb, have mercy on them because they brought me up when I was young. O oh Allah, have mercy on them because they brought me up when I was little. Amazing. Oh Allah, both of them, they brought me up when I was little. Have mercy on them. It is important to make dua for our parents. This supplication is definitely from revelation. It is divine. Allah is instructing man to say, 
you know, say, call out to Allah, say, Rabbi rahamahuma kama rabbayani sagheera. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who understand these beautiful supplications towards our parents for the benefit of our parents and something unique that I can teach you today. You may know it already, but we can repeat it for the benefit of ourselves. Even if your parents have passed away, keep making dua for their mercy, for their goodness and so on. For as long as they are part of the ummah, that, ben that dua will benefit them and it is a requirement that you keep making dua for them. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon your parents, uh, to, you know, to have mercy upon them, to forgive them their shortcomings, to give them jannah. That dua is probably the most powerful way that you can help your deceased parents. Amazing. That dua is one of the most powerful ways if not the most powerful way that you can actually benefit your deceased parents. It's very easy. It's not difficult. You know, people think of very difficult things. How can I help my father? He's passed away. Make dua for him. Repeat the dua. Keep repeating it every day. Oh Allah, forgive my father. Grant him Jannah. Forgive my mother. Grant her Jannah. Make it easy for her in her grave and so on. And resurrect her with the pious. Any dua to do with her forgiveness and her akhirah or his in terms of your parents or both of them, that would help them the most. Those supplications are definitely uh, amazing. I want to move on to something else, which is uh, the next you know, circle. We started off, we spoke about the family, we spoke about parents. Now we want to speak about the rest of the ummah, the rest of the Muslims. So the supplication there, we will notice it in the lives of the Muhajirin and Ansar. You know, those who uh, fled Makkah al Mukarramah or those who had left Makkah al Mukarramah upon the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time of the Hijrah, they went to Medina Munawwara. When they went to Medina Munawwara, they were met with the Ansar. And those Muhajirin and Ansar, they loved each other, they sacrificed for each other in many, many ways. There were others who followed, even, with, even like us. We are from among those who followed later on. We are not Muhajirin nor are we Ansar. But we are those who followed, who came later on. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those who came immediately afterwards and even those who followed later. And this verse is in Surah Al-Hashr, verse number 10. وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِن بَعْدِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ Those who came after them, they say, or they said, so either you continue saying if it is now or those before you have just said it. So, وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ Those who came after them, يَقُولُونَ They say. What do they say? May Allah make this dua on our tongues very often. رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَا بِالْإِيمَانِ وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ رَؤُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ O oh our Rabb, forgive us and our brethren who have preceded us in Iman, those who came before us from the Ummah. Oh Allah, forgive us and forgive our brothers and sisters. Ikhwanina here would include brothers and sisters, members of the Ummah. Oh Allah, forgive us and forgive our brethren, those who have come before us in Iman. So we're making dua for those who came before us. It shows that there is a concern. It shows that there is uh, a feeling. I don't just want to be forgiven, but I want those before me to also be forgiven. Amazing. Amazing. It's very deep. I think a lot of us are quite selfish. We don't even think of it. Some of us might be making this dua, but we don't even know what it means. Now, sometimes you might have read a little book of history where there might have been a dispute between those who preceded us, whether they were from the Sahaba or Tabi'een, or those who came later on, the companions, or those who followed. Uh, there might have been a small dispute. You, even uh, later on, there might have been wars between the Muslims. There might have been people who were right and wrong. We might have read things. The books of history could have been changed. They could be inaccurate in some cases, depending on what exactly the story was and how it came to us. 
all of that set aside, we say, رَبَّنَا غْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَا بِالْإِيمَانِ Oh Allah, forgive us and forgive those who preceded us with Iman. And now because I might have a slight feeling, oh you know there was a dispute between this person and this person uh, in 500 uh, after Hijrah or 656 Hijri when Baghdad actually uh, dropped and so on. Uh, and so we have a slight feeling in our heart sometimes. So Allah says the continuation of that dua, وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا O oh Allah, O oh Allah, do not place in our hearts the slightest negative feeling for those who have believed with us. Subhanallah. Do not place in our hearts the slightest hatred, ill feeling, malice, whatever else it may be for the, uh, the rest of the believers. That's something interesting. So whatever happened between them is between them and Allah. You know, I'm living now so many years later. Even if we've had a dispute with someone of the ummah, we are asking Allah, Oh Allah, do not let that malice come into my heart for another, another Muslim. If you look at the problems we're facing on the globe today, the Muslims among, their, among themselves, there is so much of hatred that they don't want to look eye to eye. Any, they're looking for any reason to be divided. Unfortunately, surely we should be looking for any reason to be united. وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا O oh Allah, do not place in our hearts the slightest negative feeling for those who have believed. So shaitan comes to you and makes you say, they haven't believed. They are not believers. And this is a sickness in the ummah where people think they are qualified to remove the rest of those who are saying La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah from the fold of the ummah. Subhanallah, we might want to discuss, we might want to warn, we might say there are certain deeds that may uh, negate your faith in Allah. But to start taking people in and out of the ummah as though it's a property of ours and we have the right to say and to bring in and take out, that is very dangerous. That is what is resulting in the fighting, the killing, the wars, the hatred, the destruction within the ummah. Whereas we're supposed to be coming together, there will be differences. There were differences from the time of the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah be pleased with them and us too. We need to know how to deal with difference of opinion respectfully. And we may want to differ. We may want to strongly disagree on certain matters, but that should not result in hatred within and among those who utter that shahada. It is a very sacred shahada. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. Wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu. And I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his messenger, his prophet, his slave, his worshiper. That is a, a shahada, the declaration of tawheed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So this is why that dua ends uh, o oh Allah, do not place in our hearts any ill feeling towards those who have believed. Rabbana inna karaufun rahim. O oh Allah, you are the most kind, the most merciful. You are filled with kindness and mercy. Uh, you are the greatest. O oh Allah, fill our hearts with kindness and mercy too. So this is a dua. I call on all of us to read this dua on a daily basis. There is no fixed number, no fixed place, no specific time, but it's just a supplication from the Quran that would be very, very powerful if we were to use these words, bearing in mind their meaning to call out to Allah. رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَا بِالْإِيمَانِ وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ رَؤُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ O our Rabb, Forgive us and those of our brethren who have preceded us with Iman and do not let our hearts hold within these hearts even the slightest ill feeling, even the slightest ill feeling uh, against those who have believed for indeed, O oh our Lord, you are the most kind, the most forgiving. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us benefit from these beautiful divine supplications mentioned in Revelation. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us. Until we meet again, aqulu qawli hadha wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.